Here we've got a uh, Dell Optiplex 330. Uh, this is an older system, it's Pentium uh, dual core processor, I believe. Yeah, Pentium dual core processor. It's an old Windows XP workstation that uh, you know, it's, it was pretty much a throwaway box for a client. Uh, instead of just tossing this in the dumpster or, or recycling it or whatever everybody does with them these days, um, we're going to repurpose this as a network attached storage device. So I'm going to pop this open, show you what's inside real quick. Real basic system, but this is a good use for old PCs. Uh, this will be an online backup, maybe a file share, but most likely just an online backup for their servers. Um, we'll put two hard drives in here so we've got redundancy, and it'll be a nice place for them to run their, their uh, network backups to. Opening the case on these, pretty easy, pretty obvious. There is a latch on the back, slide it open on the side, opens right up. Inside of this box has already been stripped out. Your two gigs of RAM, it's plenty for most NAS boxes. NAS is network attached storage for those who don't know. We've got a couple of terabyte uh, Western Digital red hard drives. Here's the data on the drives. It's a Western Digital one terabyte um, red drive, which is designed for um, network attached storage. They're supposed to, according to the Western Digital anyway, last a little longer. They're designed for full-time uh, use, 24-7 kind of operations in a network attached storage device. Uh, 64 meg cache, as you can see, these are OEMs. So this is what you get when you order an OEM drive. Um, you just get the drive. There are no cables. Uh, nothing else comes along with it. It's just a drive. As you can see, packaged like every other drive out there. They've got little shot containers, all that kind of stuff. So whenever I strip out old machines, before I send them to the recycler, Take out the cables, take out any memory, take out hard drives, anything I can use to uh, rebuild another machine, have around for spare parts. I'm sure everybody already knows this, but when you plug in a SATA cable, there's an L shape in the device. So you've got a key on this end for plugging them in. Just match that up on the motherboard, plug it in. I like to route my cables pretty if I can. I mentioned before, whenever I take a system apart, when I send, before I send it out to be recycled, uh, I take anything I think that might be useful out of it. So we've got here a drive tray from a different op Optiplex. Drive tray is very simple. You've got your power connector, your SATA connector. There's a gap in here. Drive drops in. It's got pins that slide into the screw holes there. And there. Real 
real basic, easy to do. And then just slides into the drive tray. Like so. Depending on the box, you may have to run more power, but um, these Dells did come with a dual power. Pop those in. Those are keyed connections, just like the SATA connection, so it's got an L-shaped connector. pop the uh, side back onto that and we should be ready to go. There's three tabs at the bottom of this. Just plugs in, clips down, real simple. It's an older design but it's a good one. So this NAS box is uh, just about ready to install here. The last thing I do with these, the reason I use these little flash drives for free NAS is they're very small, they're inconspicuous, it's plenty of space to install the operating system even though four gigs is nothing these days. But if you pop that in there, install the OS, and as, if you can imagine, using a larger device like this, if you're in a small office, it's very tempting. It's an obvious flash drive. If this is in the corner by this company server or if it's in the uh, closet, it's very easy to bump this, break it, or just have somebody go, oh, fl flash drive, I need one of those, and walk away and there goes your, your uh, file system that you're sharing or your backup or whatever you happen to be running to the NAS box. So I use the little small SanDisk ones. They're kind of difficult to pull and remove. And they're, they don't look like anything. They don't look like anything important. They're just sitting there doing their job. Um, the other thing, you can install them in the back if you need to press this into a tight space that doesn't stick out, doesn't take up a lot of space. Now that we have the drives installed, the USBs, no, the small USB flash drives installed in the front, you can just download, and obviously I've done this already, you can just download your um, copy of FreeNAS from www.freenas.org. Insert that in the system. It will boot to that CD and step you through the installation process. It's very easy. Uh, in another video later on, I'll go through the actual process of that installation and, and some of the options you can do with the system from there. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.